Okay, so I saw this video a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I didn't really watch it all the way through because it's a very long video and I haven't really had time to go through it, but I, I kind of skimmed through it and I tried to find how you get Ubuntu Mate 20.10 uh, on the Raspberry Pi. Now, I couldn't see how to do it and I didn't see any links in the video, so if I just pause it. So if I go into the show more bit, I couldn't see anything on there. So there's a GitHub and there's various different things in there, but I couldn't work out how to do it, and so I left it. So I had a comment on one of my videos uh, which said, uh, can you do a video on Ubuntu 20.10 download from this website? So I did a Google search just to double check it, uh, and I won't put the link in because I've got into trouble with links before, uh, but basically if you just search for Groovy Gorilla, Ubuntu, and Raspberry Pi 4, uh, it comes up with this. You can see there's two images here, uh, so pre-installed images, so Raspberry Pi generic. I downloaded the 64-bit version, uh, although first of all I was using this on a 2 gig Pi 4 and uh, it has crashed a few times. Since I've changed over to a 4 gig one, I haven't had it crash and it didn't seem to like lots of tabs open at the same time. I'm not sure if it's to do with the 2 gig or not, but we'll see how it goes for this video on the 4 gig one. So the way I installed this was to download this server image uh, and I think it's about 707 megabytes, so just click on that and download it. Uh, and then write it to your SD card with Belena Etcher or Raspberry Pi Imager. When you boot it up, you won't get a desktop. Uh, and if you follow one of my older videos, uh, so this is the same principle uh, and in the description of this video, so once you've created your password, uh, you can just type in sudo apt get install uh, and then whatever you want to install. So in my case, I did lubuntu-desktop, but you can do the same. Oh, and it does this occasionally. Uh, if I do control alt t to open a terminal, it seems to get rid of it. Uh, and this did happen on the other version. Now, why this is different and the way this is installed is because I couldn't get the Wimpy's version to work. It, uh, it doesn't seem to be ready for 20.10, so whether that's coming soon. But I just thought I'd have a play around and I'd see if it works using this older method. So basically in the terminal, once it's all booted up and it takes a while to get there, it will ask you for a password, create the password, then just put this in uh, and you can substitute it with uh, Ubuntu, Lubuntu, Ubuntu-Mate, I did, uh, sudo apt-get install Lubuntu-desktop and then after a while you end up with the desktop. So I don't think it tells you very much on that page so I'll get rid of that. And the video performance is actually very good. Uh, if I do And considering this is probably the uh, x86 version, so it's not specifically designed for the Raspberry Pi 4, even though the server bit is, the bit where you install uh, the desktop interface is not specifically for Raspberry Pi 4. And so I'm surprised it works as well as it does because it is pretty quick. If I play something with a bit of movement in it, which would be, yeah, this one's got a bit of movement in it. It's actually quite a snappy uh, browser as well. And uh, I have managed to install Chromium on this because I wanted to try and see if it worked with Netflix, which it does. Uh, oh, let's just skip past the ad if it gives us the chance. So let's skip in a bit so it's in the middle of a game just to show you that it looks pretty smooth. And it doesn't tend to be bad at dropping frames either, so it's already in 1080. If I right click and do Stats for Nerds, I found that when I left it playing for quite a while earlier on, it didn't struggle at all. And, uh, and I really thought the performance was pretty good. Okay, so on the desktop, I've got a link for Chromium. Uh, now I installed, to do with my previous video where you can install uh, the Chromium browser on a 64-bit OS with Widevine support, so things like Netflix work. So if I copy that and put that into a terminal, you'll see what happens. It will launch Chromium browser with Widevine support, so I've got to put my password in. Here we go, so let's do a search for Netflix. And I'm already logged in from before. Just hit play. 
The Chromium browser doesn't play as smoothly oh, as the, the Firefox browser on this, this week. Uh, but, it, but at least it does let you watch it. Now you probably, to get surgery, better performance, you probably drop the resolution the of the it's desktop down to 720. I think that would be better. I better pause that because I can't really show too much of that. But nice to see that's working in another operating system. And to overclock this, it's slightly different to how you do Raspbian. So you can see here, sudo nano forward slash boot forward slash firmware user config dot text. And the reason you have to do that is if I go into this folder and click on here, you can see in boot, there is another folder called firmware. Because normally in boot, you get config dot text and that's how you overclock Raspberry Pi OS or Twister OS. Well, Twister OS, you can go do it from uh, Commander Pi. But uh, if I go into firmware, you'll see that if I scroll down, there is a user config dot text and that's the bit that you're adjusting. And you can see here I've got disable underscore overscan equals one, which was to get rid of the black bars around the, the edge of the screen. Uh, and then we've got over voltage of eight. I tried six before, but it was crashing, but I don't know if that was because it was the two gig pie, um, but it seems to be working all right with the four gig pie. So 2147 I'm overclocked to. So if I go back to this one and let's pop that into terminal and just show you how you overclock it. Obviously overclock at your own risk. So if I paste that in and then put my password in, there you go. So it shows up just the same as it does on Raspberry Pi OS. Uh, and so anything that's added, uh, if it's got a hash on it, so if I put in here, so if you put a hash in, it goes blue. So anything you type in here doesn't apply to the overclock. So it doesn't matter if I save that. So if I do control O and can uh, press enter, that will save those changes, but that line won't make any, any impact or do anything to it, and as will none of these. So anything with a hash means it doesn't count, but if it hasn't got a hash and uh, it's something that the Raspberry Pi recognizes, then it'll apply it on boot. So as you can see, 2147. So let's press Control X to exit that and quit out of that. So as I mentioned before, I've changed the desktop uh, let's change it again just to show you how easy it is. Desktop preferences, uh, background. You can see there are some in here, but they all mention 20.04. So just to show that it is running the latest version, if I open up terminal, uh, NeoFetch was already installed on this. Uh, when I went to install it, it said it was already it was already present, which is interesting. Uh, but you can see here, Lubuntu Groovy Gorilla Development Branch. Uh, an arch for Raspberry Pi 4 and you can see that I'm running at well I'm running at 2147 but it reports it as 2.2 gig and you can see here that it's not really using a lot of RAM in my 4 gig Pi so it uses the Muon package manager but the only thing about this possibly is that it will show up things that aren't compatible with the Pi uh, and that's because this desktop interface is for an x86 processor, I believe anyway, I haven't really gone into it much. I mean, eventually uh, there will be a Wimpy's version and that's the one I would recommend you use. But I was just impressed at how stable this was, uh, how it recognized everything. So uh, I, it recognized my NAS drive perfectly, no problem at all, went straight into it, uh, really fast in fact. Uh, it also recognized the printer as well, uh, which is a wireless HP printer. So everything does seem to be working nicely. You can see here I've got a clipboard uh, and this remembers all the things that you've, uh, you've copied and pasted, which is really quite handy. Under the settings, so system tools and now where is it? Preferences, LXQT settings, there's a load of things in here. And there's a configuration center, uh, which has all sorts of options on here. So you can see the printer is there software sources, uh, appearance, so if I click on that, you can see there's all sorts of things you can change here, icons and themes and fonts. Usual fare for uh, Ubuntu systems, but does show differently to the Wimpy's version. Uh, so the way the settings are presented and things like that are slightly different in this version. But as I say, it has been working well. I think the resolution, oh no, it is, so it is 1920 by 1080. Earlier on, it was running at some weird resolution, 18 something, uh, and that also happened with the older versions of Ubuntu on the Pi. So that sorted itself out. The HDMI audio sorted itself out. Initially, it was coming through the analog cable, but it is coming through HDMI now, and that's working fine. Now, if I go into Documents, uh, so 
here you can see that I created a PowerPoint and uh, that also works pretty well I, d I did find it, it's definitely faster than before Wimpy's versions of Ubuntu uh, Ubuntu was quite slow this is definitely way faster than that there's definitely been big improvements right so let's see if we can insert an image Again, let's go for documents. That's a 1920 by 1080 image. Yeah, so it's it's nice and fast. I'm definitely pleased with how, how it's working. So let's close that down. Don't save. Let's just change the desktop. Go for background. It comes with a load of images, uh, but they, they're all 20.04. Uh, so they're the older version. So the first one it started up with, I think, was one of these, uh, which actually says 20.04 on it, which was which was no ideal. Uh, but if I wanted to change my own one, uh, now where is it in documents? I can pop that one on there. A new one I've I've created because I've done over 300 Pi videos, and so I thought I'd create a wallpaper for myself. Um, but yeah, I really love the way it works. Uh, it's very it's very snappy. Uh, since I put it on the 4 gig pi, so I don't recommend it for the 2 gig pi uh, because this has been working fine. I mean, if I if I open up a load of tabs, let's see if that uh, tends to crash it or get it slow. So YouTube, let's go for Hot UK Deals, BBC. I think there might have been an Apple event, which I usually watch, but I've been doing so much Pi stuff, I've just completely forgotten all about it. Right, Apple, oh, September the 15th, so it's not, it wasn't today anyway. Let's click on that, BBC, let's go for Sport, because there's no negative news there, or not so much negative news. Hot UK Deals, you can see this video's playing. I better pause that, because that's not good to be playing. Uh, and scrolling is pretty good. Yeah, happy with that. And it's loaded up pretty quick considering things, several things are loading at once. So, it certainly looks good. Oh, and you see the uh, CPU load went up really high then. Why was that? If I'm scrolling the page, it goes right up high. And I think that, because on, yeah, 85, let's 79. So it's obviously ramping up the CPU uh, to full speed when, when you're moving around on that page. But the performance seems very good. Anyway, so I hope you like this. Uh, I'm really quite impressed with it so far. I'm going to keep on trying. If anybody knows how to get Wimpy's version of 20.10, uh, if they could let me know, because I couldn't see it from the video and also the uh, from the comments, and I would really like to try it. Okay, so thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.